Welcome uh, to Part of TV. We have a very interesting uh, program for you, an interesting interview with uh, Karen Papazian, who is the Director of Development and Outreach at the HBU Global Headquarters in New York City. Karen, thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure you'll be giving us a lot of information about the AGBU. As you very well know, you have spearheaded funding for AGBU Central Board projects as the scholarship programs, children's centers in Armenia, Fund for Artsakh, Lebanon, Syria. You've also developed partnerships for various initiatives and supported AGBU chapters throughout the world. You really have a very unique position and you are very well connected with all these activities at the AGBU worldwide. Karen, I know and you know that AGBU is a global organization and the largest Armenian nonprofit organization in the world. You have described AGBU as the unwavering champion of the Armenian people that has remained rooted in our homeland and has carried out its mission of civic engagement through volunteers. My first question, can you elaborate what I've said and give us an example of the work of the AGBU? And I thank you very much once again. Definitely. Thank you so much, Vartan, for having me on today. I know these are such interesting times and I'm so happy to see the pandemic hasn't slowed you down. Uh, and, and as you'll find out, it hasn't slowed us down at AGBU. Um, volunteers are truly the backbone of everything we do at AGBU. Since 1906, we've been touching every corner of the globe and, and making impact in all spheres in society, but really we couldn't have done it without volunteers. Um, from our central board members as volunteers, to our chapter chairs, to our committees, um, volunteers have really uh, orchestrated a lot, uh, whether it's helping us expand programs, uh, for example, our summer internship program, which is now called the Global Leadership Program, went from one city to five cities thanks to volunteers, or AGBU Hygiene, uh, which was our, which are our uh, Pregnant Women's Centers in Armenia was started mm -hmm. by a volunteer. Even our AGBU Young Professionals Network started by a group of volunteers. Um, so we know how instrumental the role of volunteers and that um, powerful network. Mm. And AGBU has been successful over the last 114 years, but even more so today because of the power of that um, network and being able to harness the fact that they reach every corner, whether it's Brazil or Yerevan or New York or Montreal and, and help and as they help us deliver our mission and help us um, uh, bring impactful programming, we are able to, to touch really uh, more and more lives. You know, you speak about every corner of the globe. You mentioned it 10 times and HBO has these presence in every, almost every country in the world, of course, including Armenia. When you speak about every corner of the world, people don't realize the smaller new communities that are mushrooming throughout Europe, throughout the world, as a result of the exodus of Armenians from Armenia. What is the experience like to work with these? What are the needs of these communities? Well, it's, it's interesting and actually very timely. We just had a conversation with a group in Lisbon, and it was, it was sort of uh, mind-opening for me to hear there's a group of 100 Armenians in Portugal, 100, and yet they've still been able to put together an organization. They've still been, been able to set up a university course at the University of Lisbon, and, and we're right now in, in, the, in the talks to, to potentially partner with them. Um, but it really is, um, it is so important to also recognize the Armenian communities go beyond just where the AGVU centers or schools or programs are. And we're very well aware of those smaller communities. And in fact, I've seen that a lot now. Now that we're virtual, we're being able to touch people in places that we couldn't get to before. Um, so whether it's the hundred uh, Armenians in, in Portugal or the hundred in, um, in, in Norway, they're able to suddenly be a part of what we're doing. Now, while we're always trying to do that and actually our board members uh, uh, play an instrumental role in getting to all of those corners of the world. Um, it really does sort of set a new path for us in terms of the importance of really connecting in those, in those various communities. 
you know, in the same line, you mentioned the central board members as volunteers, and they are volunteers, very qualified people. And I think the leadership is a very, very important uh, aspect of the AGBU. And we have, obviously, the president, Bert Setrakian. We have, uh, I don't know if Sam Simonian is there, uh, Yervan Zorian, and I can list all these names. But these are very, very powerful people who have contributed to the world around us and now serving the Armenian nation through the AGBU. You know, whenever we speak of Tumo Center, it's, Sina, it's uh, Simonian. We speak of a virtual college, it's Yer, Dr. Yervan Zorian. So we have so much happening within the AGBU. Over the 114 years, uh, Karen, maybe you can help me here, AGBU has been giving and giving and giving and leading the community uh, with the orphans, with the earthquake, with every single aspect of Armenian life. But people don't realize AGBU cannot, does not have limitless resources. AGBU is also limited in its ability to reach out every single community. How, what is the important message here that AGBU cannot just give and give and give? How can we send this message out that HB also has to receive, has to be supported in its mission? Definitely. It's a great point. I mean, we, we do uh, see the, the guidance and the advice and, and, and the time that volunteers give invaluable and priceless. But uh, the, the investment of our donors is also so, so important to everything that we do. While we're fortunate that we are 100 uh, 14 years uh, and and have a have a substantial endowment as the needs of our community changes as more Armenians are leaving Armenia and the diaspora needs are different or as uh, um, we find the needs in, in Armenia and Artsakh changing we have to constantly evolve our programs, expand our programs, and that takes money, whether it's operations or whether it's to be able to respond quickly to that need. And today's crises is, is, is a great example of where, thanks to um, donor response and the ability to be resilient uh, and flexible, but um, because we have this uh, supportive donor community, uh, which includes donors who give every year and donors who give once in a while or to a particular project, but it is really instrumental in what we do and to be able to deliver that meaningful change. Um, so uh, on that note, we have launched uh, specifically a campaign to meet the needs of our communities during the pandemic. Um, and this humanitarian relief effort um, is uh, is in the same vein as what we've seen in the past, what we did with Syria. But because it's on a global scale, it's even it's even more. Um, the magnitude is even greater. And so we are calling all of our friends, our alumni, our um, neighbors to to uh, support our uh, campaign. Which to this day, what we've been able to do um, is uh, really I mean, incredible, considering uh, how much need is out there and how many other nonprofits office do need our community support but thanks to our volunteers who have orchestrated a lot of the programming we have a free food uh, box program in nine cities in six countries um, we've been able to help fund some of the PPE that went to Armenia uh, we're providing more educational scholarships because families have been really hit hard um, and also we're thinking ahead we're thinking about what are the post-pandemic needs? What is the community community gonna look like tomorrow or in a year or in 10 years? You know, when I was in Armenia a few years ago, I asked a American student who was working there at Pixart, I think, at Tumo Building. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, what is your message to the uh, young members of the community in America? And she did not hesitate. And she said, tell the American community Armenia today is not your grandma's Armenia. And I think the AGBU has also, it's not our grandma's and grandpa's AGBU. Things are changing around us. And I'm, we all know that AGBU has been moving with professionals. You are a professional within the AGBU. How can you tell us how AGBU has changed? What is the present situation? Why is it not my grandma's AGBU? Definitely. I've said that over and over again, no longer the mom and pop shop. Um, we really have become um, truly, I mean, I say a quote unquote business in terms of 
we assess the needs of the community. We're accountable, we're transparent. Um, you know, we're, we're looking for performance indicators. Does the program uh, meet the needs of this, this, and this? Um, what are the results? How are we changing the lives? Um, and it, it's not easy given that we uh, have a, a, a diasporan community and market, and we also have Armenia and Artsakh. Um, but we have been able to thanks to, again, the support of, of our donors, is really beef up our operations. And where there is need for um, more professional and, and in-staff uh, or in-office staff, we've been able to do that. The office in Armenia, you know, Vasken uh, Yakubyan very well, um, is, is, is uh, running programs so professionally um, that, you know, it, it, it is a story to tell and it is mm -hmm. the successes that we need, we need to share. Um, we're also delivering programs that we couldn't have delivered 10 or 15 or 25 years ago because, again, um, took more, more staff, more time, more resources. Um, with the launch of AGBU Empower Her, which uh, we, we spoke of a few months ago, I mean, we're really advancing in, in so many different you know, spheres. Karen, I love the way you presented no more mom and pop talk. You know, that's a, I'm going to use it in the future. But, uh, you know, the HBO is all over the world. HBO does so much. You know, you had your own definition of HBO. I loved when in Armenian somebody said, it's a pokrik han rabiduchun. It's a petite republic. I love that word in describing HBO, and I always use it. Uh, Karen, we can talk about uh, Camp Dubar, cancellation, we can talk about virtual college, but what is the most important message you have for listeners as we wrap up this interview? Well, I think it is so important to, once again, to sort of stress how uh, resilient uh, our community is. And, and, and the only reason really AGBU has been so, uh, let's say, successful or um, resilient during this current crisis is because of the support our community has um, That so our staff have been creative. We've launched new programs when you say that new or our summer internship program is canceled, we've been quick to come up with uh, adaptations okay. or replacement kind of programs, uh, realizing that we can't just sit back. And again, it, it comes from a mix of, uh, of things, but really the volunteers, the staff, and this resilience and responsiveness is so, so key um, to sustaining through, um, through a, a crisis like this. And I think... Um, Mr. Sikhtrakyan, our president, actually said it best, and if I may read a quote, um, he had issued a statement um, uh, during the beginning of the pandemic. And he said, certainty, one thing is clear, in unity is strength. Face-to-face -face or at a distance, we are committed to serving our global community from in the belief that we will recover and rebound together. And we really do, um, sit with this message and everything that we are introducing or continuing during these, this crisis really uh, stands on, on that quote and that sentiment. We will recover, Karen, with the energy of the younger generation I consider to be on the younger side. Uh, we are in good hands, Karen. I really appreciate your time and your comments, very crystal clear, and your message. We will recover and we'll greet better days ahead. Thank you very much, Karen. Thank you very much, Farhatan. We really appreciate your ongoing support of AGBU. You're a great ambassador of all that we do, and uh, we're grateful for that.